Do you like fun fold cards? I do. Think they're complicated and take too long to make? Well, not at all. Today I'm going to show you just how quick and easy it is to create a double easel card. Hi, I'm Linda Anderson from Linda Lou Creates, and I'm so happy you joined me. This double easel card uses products from the Come Together suite out of the holiday catalog from Stampin' Up. I decided though to show you one that uh, I'm gonna switch it up and make it a Christmas card. Now I am using my favorite suite out of the catalog, Let It Snow, because well, I just love snowmen. So this suite fits the bill for that. Let me get going. Um, this is the card we're going to make. Let me just kind of go over the supplies that you're going to need. I used the stamp set Snowman Season. Look at all those adorable little snowmen. What I like about them is that they're quick and easy to color. You can use whatever product that you prefer to use for coloring. I happen to pull out a mix of uh, both the Stampin' Right markers and the Stampin' Blends to color up my snowmen. As far as the inks go, I've used the Tuxedo Black from Memento, Soft Suede, Real Red. I also want to show you then the cardstock that we're going to be using. So let me just put this to the side. <clears throat> Excuse me. The card base is a usual card base. This one measures 11 inches long, four and a quarter. It is scored at five and a half to make it the top folding card that I use so often. On the inside, I went ahead and added my white cardstock, and that one measures five and a quarter by four. Um, I did the real red for the sentiment, stamped this little snowman in the tuxedo black memento, and colored him in with my markers. Now for the fun folding portion of the card, I used real red, and this measures four inches by ten and a quarter. Two places to score, first at two and a half, the second score line is at five. Let me just go over then the uh, designer series paper. Again, this is from the this is the Let It Snow specialty paper. You're going to need two different pieces. The larger piece measures three and three quarters by five, and this smaller piece then measures three and three quarters by two and a quarter. If you missed a lot of these measurements, don't worry. I'm going to put these on my blog, lindalucreates.com. Uh, and that way you'll be able to see them right there. A couple other little things I have. I have an oval. I happen to use the stitched shapes uh, dies on that. And then also from the layering ovals, I have a piece of black uh, to have the scalloped because I always love to layer those two together. For the sentiment, I have a piece of white. This is 5 eighths of an inch wide and across it is 4 inches. And then just a piece of the fun red curly ribbon that is in uh, that suite as well. Um, I just happen to have this piece left over from using out of the spool. So um, whatever amount uh, you have, you'll be able to use then. So, Okay, I also have some uh, used red rhinestones as embellishments on my card. Okay, so let me kind of set some things aside here. And let's get to stamping a little bit first. I am going to do the snowman in the memento black. Now, here is the snowman. He kind of just the snowman himself. So I will go ahead and get him. I'm gonna stamp him down a little bit to make room for the hat. All right, and then the hat. Just put that right on top. There we go. All right, 
he needs some arms, doesn't he? So that's where the soft suede ink will come into play. So I have the twig here for his arms and we'll just go ahead and get those stamped in. Okay. One thing with snowmen, um, you know, things don't have to be stamped perfectly uh, like because that's the way snowmen are. They kind of are their own being, so to speak. Um, so they can be a little wonky if you want them to. So let me open up the real red ink. I'm going to set my snowman aside, pull in this strip, and I am going to then go ahead and stamp up my Merry Christmas. Okay. And trying not to get my head into the camera. Let's see how we did. Hey, not too bad. Not too bad at all. All right, because I know me, I am going to close that ink pad up real quick. And let me just set that aside. And now I'm going to pull in my markers and show you some of the things that I did. The pumpkin pie for his nose. I used Petal Pink for his cheeks. There's little lines there that uh, you stamp, so I decided to just highlight those. For the hat, I went with Basic Gray. Um, I kind of color it a couple times to make it a little bit on the darker side to hide that little bit of the top of his head that um, you can see through. So if you just put on a couple little layers um, why didn't I use black? Um, good question. I don't know why. I just happened to grab this, and uh, that's what I went with. So, here is the gray. For the red, I went with the berries. I did the red berries on his hat. That is the real red marker. Shaded spruce is what I pulled out then for the leaves on this sprig of holly. And then I have my light pool party stamp and blend. So I'm just going to put on the uh, band. And I'm, I also want to do just a little bit of highlighting on the snowman himself. You see some of these dark lines within the stamp. Those kind of helped me as far as figuring out where I want to put some highlights and sh uh, sort of like a shadow effect for him. Then I needed to kind of put him on some ground. So I just draw a line going across here and gave him a little bit of ground to be on. What's nice using the blend that if I'm a little crooked or need to go back, with the blend, um, it's not going to leave a dark streak. It will all just kind of blend in so nicely. And uh, so I have a nice smooth kind of hill, so to speak, for him to be resting on. And that's all I did for the snowman. Um, mount him up onto the uh, black scallop, which I did here, and applied some dimensionals. Now they're a little funny looking, and I'll explain why I did them the way I did. So let me put that off to the side. I'll come back to that in a moment. All right. So next, let's get going on the actual card itself. The card base. Go ahead and fold it, burnish it. I, like I said, I stamped my sentiment and I did another snowman on the inside and colored him up. It, it can be put on in the inside already. Did that, okay? Next, let's pull out this 10 and a quarter by four inch piece of real red. I'm going to start first by folding it in half. Well, not exactly in half, but along that five inch score line. All right, and then the, the line that, the score line that is at two and a half, I'm going to bring that top and bring it down. So it, it reminds me of a Z, the letter Z is how it's going to then look. All right, now the DSP, here we go. Here's one of them. Let me bring in my snail and let's get it 
oops, it will go right here in the front. Okay. Now the bigger piece, the one that measures five by three and three quarters. Let me get it. This paper has some fun on the uh, hats. It has some fun glitter already on there. I just like to put some extra adhesive across that uh, so that that glitter uh, doesn't really affect how my paper is going to adhere down when I put it down there since it's not completely smooth with that glittery goodness on the back there. Okay, so I think you're getting the idea. Here is that the fun fold part of it. Now let's ad adhere this to our card base. So I'm going to flip it over and with it folded, so this is just the one portion of it, is where I'm going to put my adhesive. Okay. Fun folds, people do like to play with them. So I like to put, again, extra adhesive on this. So uh, you could even put, uh, if you wanted to use the multi-purpose glue, you can do that or tear and tape. But I do find that I like to, with fun folds, make sure I have it with some good strong adhesive or a lot of adhesive on it because people are going to be playing with it a lot. <laughs> okay. So here we go, let me just kind of lay it down. So we have the fold from our main card, or our card base, and then here's another fun fold, the second option to it then as well. We're gonna decorate the front here. First, I have a piece of the, the red curly ribbon here from the Let It Snow Suite. I'm just gonna tie a knot with it. All right. Let me just trim those ends. And now I'm going to bring in, you know what, let me just cut them down a little bit more. I like my ends a little bit smaller. Okay, there we go, I'm happier with that. I'm just gonna kind of pull out the one blade here and just fluff out that ribbon, or, or those the fibers from this fun ribbon. All right, so now you see how fun and fluffy that is. So I like that look. Now, this is, let me show you now why I did what I did with the dimensionals on my snowman layer here. I want to make sure that I avoid the ribbon when I adhere the oval down here, the snowman oval. So I'm going to line it up so that this is where my ribbon goes through that little channel right there. So it also hangs off the uh, the edge of it. Let me bring the other one back in. Kind of put that off to the side. So as you can see, it hangs off. So I want to make sure that I don't let have any of my dimensional showing then on the back of it. So that's why I only have them about a third of the way down. So Let's see if I can get these. Yeah, um, if you're like wondering why so many dimensionals, that's just what I do. So, <laughs> so let me make sure that the ribbon is down to a point where I will be able to have it between the channel of dimensionals and have my dimensionals not show on the other side. So let me just kind of adhere it down. So we're good, we're good. So now I can push it right down and we are good. So there's Mr. Snowman. We need to make sure that whoever gets this card knows that we're wishing them a Merry Christmas. So I have that strip that measures five eighths of an inch wide by four. And again, I need to be careful where I set my dimensionals. So I need one of them right here on this side. And then the other ones, let me put it on the end there. 
and I want to make sure that I avoid anything in this area. So maybe here with the, uh, in right here. Good, all right. Now sometimes when I do overlap, so I'm going over top of my oval with my strip here, I will put a little bit of adhesive. You don't have to. Um, I just feel like sometimes I just need that extra stick down kind of uh, aspect. So that's why I will do that sometimes. So, okay, let me get it lined up. Now this is four inches wide, this strip. So it is as wide as the red cardstock that we have here. So I'm gonna go make sure I go from red side, uh, the end of each of the red here. So, and there we go. Let me find my red rhinestones and I'm going to pull those in, pop a few of those on. Now, I felt like here on either side of Chris, Merry Christmas that it was a little sparse. So, that's where I'm going to put two of them. Now, I could leave it at that, and I actually think I will. I kind of like it just with those two on. Um, let me pull in my first one. I did add a few more. So, we'll see. Let me know. Which one do you like? Do you like the uh, extra bling up in here, or the simplicity of this one without all that extra bling? So this is the double easel card. Didn't take long to make. Um, really all you need are the measurements and you'll be right going into having fun with your fun fold card. So thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any new videos. <clears throat> Visit me on my blog, lindaloucreates.com, for even more projects and a chance to sign up for my newsletter. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope you get a chance to create today. Bye now.